Hello students, welcome to this second session on the poem, The Second Coming. In the first session, we discussed its poets, W.B. Yeats, that his artistic talent incorporates magic, mythology and symbolism. In this session, we will read and understand the poem. But to comprehend this poem, we must know some influences, biblical references and the time when this poem was composed. Note this point that it was composed in 1919 after witnessing anarchy and violence of revolution in Ireland in 16, Russian revolution of 70 and uh, horrors of first world war. First stanza describes these hopeless and disjointed times. One more thing to understand. His later poetry and later poetry, which is very mature one, we must understand some references and knowledge is must of his prose work and the reason. Where he innovates his own perception of history, that it has a cyclic procession and each cycle is of 2000 years. Here it is important to note that Yeats was an Irishman and Irishness imbues distinct features to his poetry which differentiates him from other contemporary major poets. For us, his close association with India as he was a co-translator of 10 Upanishads and with Rabindranath Tagore, Mohini Chatterjee and Shri Prohit Swami helps us a lot to understand his mysticism, his vision. As Indian philosophy divides the cycle of history in four ages, each age having 5000 years, on the basis or from other references also, he created a system where time has one cycle of 2000 years. And uh, another one approaches And this cyclic procession is endless. The idea of this poem has two sources. Bible proclaims the second coming of Christ. But after the first world war, after the first world war destruction, Yeats envisions apocalypse. And the savior is not kind, merciful, but a monstrous, a beast of lion's body and man's head. And blank gauge. Human mind is going away from conscience. This I'm speaking about the background of the poem, the ideas which gave generation to this poem, and the it's not morally led. We were talking on the point that human mind is Yeats field, or the times are like this after the first world war. Human mind is not go. Human mind is going away from conscience. It's not morally led, so anarchy is let loose upon the world. That's why collective unconsciousness in poem, it is called Spiritus Mundi, does not have any hopeful vision of the second coming. It's not a kind and merciful God, but powerful, ferocious, merciful beast. Before going through the text of the poem, note this point that among English poets, Blake and Yeats are well known for their apocalyptic poetry, which portrays truths and visions inaccessible to rational thinking. That means uh, apocalyptic poetry when you are having such visions which you can't uh, explain to others and which can't be comprehended through the rational thinking. Let's go through the text. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold, mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim dimmed tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. 
In the beginning of the poem, the poet depicts a very apt and appropriate picture of the post-war. The world war has left the world in a situation of flux and disorder. This widening gyre, as we have, gyre is a cycle. We have just now discussed that for him, the history is at the verge of ending, turning and turning. It's it's expanding itself, expanding to the extent of ending, and. The times are such that Falcon cannot hear the Falconer. Human soul, human beings have lost their contact with their conscience. That's why things fall apart. The disjointed times. Mere anarchy is loosed. Blood dimmed, tide is loosed. Ceremony of innocence is drowned. Because the people are, no, people have become away from their conscience. So. Ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all convictions. The times are such that the worst people are full of passionate intensity. There is restlessness, hopelessness, chaos and anarchy. People, are, people have lost faith and conviction and scenes of violent bloodshed have become the hallmark of the day. The line, things fall apart, the center cannot hold, portrays, the intensity of the prevalent anarchy. So, first stanza gives us the background. Background of the vision where, which the poet has. Although this poem is inspired by the vision given in the Bible, uh, book of Revelation, that uh, as in Hindu mythology it said, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Sengla Bhakti Bharata. बहुत ज़्यादा कलयुग के अति हो जाने पर भगवान को उतरना पड़ेगा ऐसे ही इन टाइम्स को प्रेजेंट करके यीट्स ने जो नेक्स्ट पैरा में जो सेकंड कमिंग कहा है लेकिन सेकंड कमिंग इस बार जो गॉड है यीट्स को लगता है इस बार जो गॉड है वो काइंड और मर्सीफुल नहीं है इस बार जो सिविलाइजेशन स्टार्ट होगी वो एक सेवेज सिविलाइजेशन होगी क्योंकि हम ह्यूमन कॉन्शियंस को हमने सुनना बंद कर दिया और हमारी जो कलेक्टिव कॉन्शियंस है उसमें भी जो वर्ल्ड की जो इमेज है जो हम नेक्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड में स्टार्ट करते हैं, surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. First stanza times depict करके कि इस टाइम का एंड है. That means second coming is at hand. But Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight. A waste of desert sands, a shape with the lion body and the head of a man, a gauge blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs while all about it wind shadows of the ignorant desert birds. So times are like this, it seems that this civilization will end and the God will again come to save save its creation but second coming hardly are those words out when vast image out of spiritus mundi spiritus mundi another reference a special reference of this thing is needed that for uh, we can refer it to as a collective unconsciousness but now the times are like this so much violence yeats has witnessed our generation has with witnessed so much violence that what image comes out the savior's image is first of all it's coming from desert sands and a shape this shape has a lion body and head of man ferocity power is there head of man but a gauge blank and pitiless as the sun is moving its slow thighs while all about it wind shadows of the indignant desert birds. A very desolate picture has been presented. Second coming is there because civilization has reached to that point for years it's sure that the next civilization will begin. This civilization will end and the next civilization will come but it will not be a kind one. He is um, trying to establish this fact that this sphinx like body or in Hindu mythology like nursing shape the image 
that spirit is going to take place and the last lines of the poem after visualizing that an image a new civilization will be begun, begun and a spirit is coming a creature is coming darkness drops again but now i know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were waxed to nightmare by a rocking cradle when one civilization is going on according to yeats when one civilization is going on another one is sleeping and that civilization is shivered or it is made to move by a rocking cradle earlier on it was christ who ended the roman greco civilization now again a cradle is rocking and what rough beast it's all come round at last slouches towards bethlehem to be born a question mark is there again a new spirit will come a new civilization will come but darkness drops again for future years is not hopeful so the poet ends on a prophetic note where the fascist forces are making their head in the next times more bloodier times more worst times is coming the poem deals with the passing away of christian era and coming in of the bestial civilization thanks for joining today's class thank you students so that was the text of the poem hope you have enjoyed the second coming by eats keep learning stay motivated thanks for joining today's class thank you students